Hello, everybody. I am Jimmy. Uh, I like. Sorry, I think his name. I can't remember his name right now. But the Kona co uh, comedian, his wife had cancer, and her star sign, whatever we call that, it was cancer. Me too. <laughs> and so I got diagnosed around 11 years ago, around this time. And so I, on my 17th birthday, my golden birthday, I had to go to my first urologist appointment. And I had only been seeing pediatricians at this point. And I walked into this office and I'm leaning a little more, like slumped over to the right end a little more because my nut had grown two times its size in the last month. It was getting big and out of hand. Literally. <laughs> and so my parents are with me because obviously this is a very strange thing to be happening. You know, doubling in size. And so we go into this urologist's office, the exam room, and I have to explain to him that there is a golf ball where something the size of like a plump grape should be. <laughs> and so he, with that, he pulls the curtain and says, drop your pace. And I'm like, okay. Again, I've only ever had a pediatrician at this point. And what they always had me do was lay down on the exam table and just like lift open my waistband and play peekaboo with it. <laughs> it was never, it was never like touching. If there was no contact and this guy, he, he's like, drop your pants. And then he lowered his stool down. And he was like eye level with my belly button. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And so I do. And he gets real close to it. And he takes his three fingers and he starts like rotating it. <laughs> and it's like he found some rare quail egg or something. <laughs> It was so weird. I knew he was going to have to see it. I didn't think he was going to get so personal. <laughs> this is my 17th birthday. And he's like, and you know, a few seconds, what maybe felt like hours went by, and he, he's like, that's got to come out. And I'm like, sure, I, I figured that much at this point. So I, I pull my pants up, and I, I finally exhale. The awkward part's over. And then he says, get on the exam then. And I'm like, what? what? You know the peekaboo game? What are we doing? And he's like, curl up into a ball. And I'm like, wait, what? And then he starts moving up his fingers. And he says, I'm going to give you a prostate exam. What a golden birthday. <laughs> I already have cancer. I'm like, dude, you just held the problem. You just had the quail. Like, like why do you need the breath? There, nothing's going on in there. And he's like, take a deep breath in. And I'm like, okay. And he put his fingers on my bone. And I think I blacked out for the next few minutes. I don't really know. But the like, next thing I knew, we were getting it scheduled for surgery. We scheduled for surgery. There was no problem through the back door. It was all just the front door. And I finally mustered up the courage to ask him what I had been wrestling with for the past month as I saw this thing get bigger. Where do you take out a testicle from? Where on the body? And I want you guys to imagine you're a freshly minted 17 year old boy right now. Just to put yourself in that mindset, and I, you could shout it out, or you could just think it to yourself. Where do you think you get a testicle out of when you're a 17 year old boy? I had no idea. Some of you might have thought, like me, they snip open the sack and they take like the coin out of the coin purse. <laughs> That was a lot to think about. That was really heavy, and I was really afraid that was the right answer. And so I came up with this other idea that they get it from the gooch. And I, I learned kind of recently that this was just a term my friends use. That's the area in between your pee hole and your bee hole. Like, uh, and so I'm hoping it's that, because the other option was just horrendous. And he goes through your pubic area region or whatever and I so you'll have to shave and I'm like that doesn't 
how does that work? The thing hanging in between my legs, you're gonna go up and over? Like I just, this has to be witchcraft or magic or something. Do you study magic, sir? But so lo and behold, like a week, a week out, I shave and I'm in the operating uh, waiting room and he comes up, he comes in, he, he like looks at my stuff again because my nuts are just holding his now. <laughs> Free play for him. And he's like, oh, you shave. We'll shave you a bit more. I'm like, what? First, you're insulting my shaving job and I, are you gonna do this when I'm awake? I don't even feel right about you doing it when I'm asleep either. Mm -hmm. But lo and behold, I wake up, that's where the stitch was, that's where he took it out. And so that was the start of my cancer journey on my 17th birthday. And I didn't actually have testicular, I had a lymphoma that spread throughout my whole body. And I was able to beat two different forms of lymphoma within the next two and a half years. Um, <laughs> And so when you go through all that, you start having a lot of weird things go on with your body. And you might have guessed one of the problems I have is low testosterone. And my oncologist told me, you have to go see a urologist about your testosterone levels. I don't know who had the bright idea to go back to this band, <laughs> but we did. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'm okay with this. This man's not gonna do any more than a handshake for contact with me. He has no reason. I have the levels. I have a note from my doctor saying that the levels are low. All you gotta do is prescribe the thing, dude. And so I get in his office and a little leaning toward the left now because that's all I got left. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell this great story. I've been stage four cancer twice since you did your magic tricks on me, and you took the nut out. I just had low testosterone. He goes, okay, I'll write you the script. Let's do the examination. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm getting scanned like every six months at this point, and I, you have the levels, like just give me the prescription. But nope, we did the whole damn pantsless dance again. <laughs> and I, I, didn't, I don't think I said this, but when he put his fingers in me, I sounded like a horse in heat, having a baby just panting. <laughs> and with the, a lot of women, I believe, tell you that the second baby's the easiest. This horse was panting heavier than me. <laughs> this doctor of magic who somehow got my testicle out, bump it over. I'm just glad he didn't pull a rabbit out of my ass. <laughs>